Glycine is another one. It turns into choline. Choline is another osmolite. It's loaded up in the vacuoles as well as the chloroplast. Okay? Choline is also converted to glycine betaine. And this is, again, a lot of science, but at the end of the day, your takeaway message here is that glycine will also load up into the vacuoles and metabolite. It will also load up in the chloroplast, which will, at the end of the day, prolong the life of your chloroplast. Okay? Especially in, in your high salt, low temperature environment, maintaining function of chloroplast is really important. Okay? Quite, plants cycle through chloroplast continuously anyway. So if we can take the life cycle, and this is all theoretical, let's just say we take the life cycle of a chloroplast from one day and, and turn it into a one day and a half, right? And, and so now what you have is the plant, instead of having to replace that chloroplast frequently, it can divert its energy doing other things. Okay, proline, we talked about that. How does proline work, okay? Proline is actually the only cyclic amino acid, meaning that's a circle, all right? And think of it in this analogy. If you have a sack and you fill it up with bricks, and then you fill it up with water, and if you pour that water out, your sack begins to shrink, it can only shrink as much as those bricks, the physical structure of those bricks allow it to do. And that's how proline works. As the vacuole starts to come under pressure because your salt levels are building outside of your soil and your, and your water starts to leave, the proline that's in there will maintain that shape and act as that brick inside your vacuole and allow it to only shrink to a certain point. So at the end of the day, we saw this picture earlier, this blue thing is our vacuole there, okay? You know, we're talking about how do we keep that water in that vacuole, right? With osmolite, okay? And, and you guys are already have been using an osmolite since probably the day you started working on a golf course and the first foremost, potassium, right? That's a, that's a huge osmolite. Potassium is the only nutrient, okay, that, uh, that does not actually become an organic uh, form in the plant. It stays K plus and it's loaded up in the vacuole, okay? Uh, another osmolite is GABA. We talked about that from, from uh, glutamic acid. Glycine betaine, proline. There's also proline betaine. So proline can metabolize into proline betaine. Choline, okay, that comes from glycine and glutamic acid itself. So when we're using these amino acids, we're loading the plant up with these osmolites, we're increasing the good salt, right? Because water is going to evaporate, right? And, and our salt concentration is going to increase outside of the cell. And so at the end of the day, we're just fighting against where can whose salt concentra concentration can be higher, inside the vacuole or outside. And so for you guys that are kind of struggling with this concept, you know, one easy way I've been able to kind of describe this is that you're looking at an arms race. This is, think of Cold War. We've got to build our good salts inside our vacuole to keep that water and that concentration there higher than our outside salt concentration, right? And when you do that, and you do that with amino acids, you can, you, you can even take the extreme where you're irrigating with salt water and your turf is still able to function and survive because that water is staying in that vacuole. Your, your cells are not shrinking and not dying. So at the end of the day, you can think of it like this. This is like the Russians from Rocky IV, and this is like Sylvester Stallone. It's, it's oversimplified, but people seem to grasp that concept. Which, which, one's clever, which one's Clever Lang? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I'm sorry. 